Hi everybody, I am That Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be discussing postpartum hemorrhage. So let's get into it. So what is postpartum hemorrhage? In order to be like officially diagnosed with postpartum hemorrhage, you have to have a blood loss greater than 500 ml for a vaginal delivery or a blood loss greater than 1000 ml for a C-section. Or we can see a 10% or more loss in your h and so a drop of 10%. What happens is when you're admitted to the hospital, we take your blood, right? And that's gonna be your baseline h and Then after delivery, usually 12 to 24 hours after delivery, we're gonna take it again. And we're gonna compare that numbers to the, um, the baseline numbers and see where we're at. So it's classified as either early or late. So an early postpartum hemorrhage happens within the first 24 hours. So the first 24 hours after delivery. And then a late happens anytime from 24 hours to that six week recovery period. So there's a long time frame when it comes to the late. Who is at the highest risk for having a postpartum hemorrhage? People who have had big babies. So macrosomia, that's just the medical word for big baby, right? So women who've given birth either vaginally or via C-section to a larger baby. Women who've had something called polyhydramnios. So this is an excess of amniotic fluid, usually over like 2,000 mLs. Women who have a high parity, so they've been pregnant a lot. Those who've had an operative vaginal delivery. An operative vaginal delivery would be the use of forceps or a vacuum or an episiotomy. The use of Pitocin. Those who've had a precipitous labor, so women who have delivered very, very quickly, so from zero to baby in like three hours. And then those who are obese. So these people are the highest risk groups. So I want you to think about a couple of these things before we jump into the signs and symptoms. Macrosomia, polyhydramnios, what do they have in common? They're really stretching that uterus, right? They're kind of pushing it to its limits. So it's probably gonna have a harder time contracting after delivery and you're more likely to bleed because of that, right? Think about this one. Operative vaginal delivery. So this one, you're probably not gonna be bleeding because of your uterus, you're probably gonna be bleeding because you have a cut in your skin, okay? So like a laceration. Pitocin, so the use of artificial oxytocin, Pitocin. Some women, they come in and their labor is either induced or augmented and they're on Pitocin forever and they're on like high levels of Pitocin forever. What Pitocin does is it causes your uterus to contract, which is a good thing, but let's say you've been on it for like two days, okay? It's been contracting and contracting and contracting for two days. After delivery, it still needs to contract so you don't bleed, but it just goes, I'm done, I'm tired, I'm not doing it anymore, I've been doing it for two days, right? So we really need to watch women who are getting Pitocin for a long period of time and at high levels. And then as far as signs and symptoms and then management, I'm gonna go through those one by one, like these ones one by one, because it kind of depends, okay? So it kind of depends on what the cause is. So let's jump into those. Okay, so now let's get into our first possible cause of hemorrhage, atony. So atony, if you're not aware, is without tone. So the uterus, instead of being like nice and tight and clamped, it's like, Ugh. okay, so there's no tone to it. So our signs and symptoms will be a boggy fundus. When you go to do your fundal checks, which we all do postpartum, right, you should feel nice and hard like a rock, right? You'll press on their tummy and it should feel nice and hard. In this situation, you'll feel it and it'll be really squishy. And actually, it might be difficult for you to even find it in the first place. They'll be saturating a pad, so lots of bleeding really quickly. They may have blood clots. A lot of times an atinous um, hemorrhage, we don't see maybe like a ton of blood blood, but we see big clots. And for reference, I would say a clot the size of like an orange is roughly 250 mLs. And think about that. 500 mLs is a normal blood loss in a vaginal delivery. So if you just have one big clot, that's already classified as a hemorrhage. And then we'll see signs of hypovolemic shock from the blood loss. So they'll be hypotensive, 
and then tachycardic. So what are our nursing interventions? We're probably going to give meds, the first of which will probably be Pitocin, if they don't already have that running. Often postpartum, they already have it running. Now we're going to run it at a very quick rate. <laughs> Um, we can give other meds for hemorrhage. Methergen is a big one, a very common one. It's not the only one. There's other ones like hemabate and Cytotec and stuff like that, but methergen is pretty popular. And then, of course, we're going to give volume expanders for lact like lactated ringers because of the hypovolemic shock. We're going to do fungal massage. So you go in, you're doing your head-to-toe on your patient, you're pressing on their tummy, and you find, oh, their fundus is boggy. The first thing you're going to do is rub on it, okay? So massage the fundus, see if that helps it, you know, firm up. Make sure mom has an empty bladder. What happens is when your bladder is full, it can displace your uterus, okay? So then it can't do its job correctly because the bladder is in the way, right? So emptying the bladder can help with this. She may have to have a blood transfusion or a platelet transfusion depending on what she's losing. You're definitely going to do a follow-up H&H because we need to know the numbers, right? Probably going to start a second IV just in case we do need to do a blood transfusion. And you want to provide emotional support to the patient because this is very scary. You have a brand new baby that you're trying to take care of, but also you're bleeding a dangerous amount. There's also other things that will be done probably by the doctor um, that I didn't want to mention here because those aren't the nurse's job. But you can do things like packing it or even a hysterectomy, that kind of stuff in this situation. But I really wanted to focus on like the nurse's job. Now let's go into the next one, which will be lacerations. If laceration is the cause of your hemorrhage, we're going to see something a little bit different. We're going to go check our mom. We're going to see she has all this bleeding. We're going to check her fundus and it's going to be nice and firm, right? So the firm uterus, and then the bleeding will be like a steady trickle. It won't be like these big gushes like we would have with like the atinous uterus. It would be like a steady trickle or stream. We shouldn't have any clots. And then again, if they have too much blood loss, those signs of hypovolemic shock. So the tachycardia and the hypotension. Our job here as the nurse is to assist with a repair because they're going to need to be like sutured up, right? Monitor vital signs and blood loss provide emotional support, and in this one, when it comes to medications, we're going to focus on pain medications, okay, because this is painful. Usually these lacerations are caused by those operative vaginal delivery things, like the forceps and the vacuum and the episiotomy, that kind of stuff, okay? So also pretty common, but this is how you can tell this apart from the atony, okay? So the uterus will be firm. Our next possible cause would be a hematoma. So hematomas, they're going to present as painful, and it kind of depends. Um, some of them are external and we can see them, and then some of them are internal and we can't. So if we can see them, what will we see? They will be swollen and discolored, usually like a deep purple in color. If we can't see them, if they're internal, the patient will usually tell us, like, I feel a fullness in the vagina, or I feel like there's something in there that I still need to push out. That's what they'll say. Our nursing interventions are going to depend on whether it's big or little. So if it's little, we kind of just watch it, okay? We put ice on it and then give, like, ibuprofen or Tylenol. We give pain meds. If it's large, we can't just leave it, okay? That's too much. So doctor has to surgically excise and evacuate it. So cut it and drain all the blood out. Now doctor would do that, but we would assist. Another possible cause of hemorrhage is something called subinvolution. So the word involution is a good word, okay? It means that the uterus is going back to its pre-pregnancy state. That's a good thing. Subinvolution means it's failing to do that. Okay, it's not doing what it's supposed to do. So how can we tell? It'll be boggy upon assessment. They might report back pain, and then they're gonna have heavy lochia rubra. Sometimes they will even start to progress and then regress in their lochia color, or they never progress at all. They stay at rubra and they never move on to serosa. So those are all kind of like, hmm, we need to watch it things. 
The biggest nursing intervention for this is education, because usually this is not something we detect in the hospital. This is something they, we notice when they're at home and then they call us. So we need to teach them to look for these signs so that they know when to call us. And the number one reason that people have subinvolution is because of a retained placenta. And if you'll note, that's our third and final one when it comes to late postpartum hemorrhage. So good segue there, let's jump into retained placenta. So retained placenta, you'll see the first sign symptom is subinvolution. So the two of those kind of go hand in hand, right? And then the other ones are pale, tachycardia, hypotensive, all signs of hypovolemic shock, right? Our nursing interventions would be to administer medications. Likely we'll give antibiotics because these people are at higher risk for infection and then we'll assist the physician in a D and C, okay? So we gotta get it out of there, you can't leave it in there. Think about that. So your uterus wants to clamp down, it wants to do what it's supposed to do, but now there's something in there, there's something in the way, right? So it can't do that, right? It can't do its job effectively. So we need to get whatever that is, retain placenta, out of there. Now I wanted to talk about the follow-up care after the whole emergency part is over. What are you as the nurse gonna do? You're going to be checking that fundus, making sure it's firm, assessing the lochia amount, color, looking for clots, monitoring vitals, teaching about the diet, so encouraging higher iron for anemia, um, increasing oral intake, so lots of water, making sure they're emptying their bladder every two to three hours, encouraging rest, and then letting them know they're at risk for orthostatic hypotension because of the blood loss. We're going to increase their IV fluids, have them discuss their feelings about the whole thing because I'm sure it's very scary for them, and then we're going to do a follow-up H&H to make sure that their levels are kind of going back up to normal in a safe place. So that was my video on postpartum hemorrhage. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know, and if not, I'll see you on the next one.